Hello and welcome to Dells Gaming and I'm actually in the From the Depths designer while well, I've been mucking around with the aircraft as I said in the last episode. So what I found was the 18, uh, I think it's 18 millimeter gauge guns were just not really effective so after a bit of testing tried larger, smaller, you know, without going to a massive size and keeping a, a good rate of fire, what I found is 24mm is actually not too bad. If you give it a good rate of fire, uh, some cooling, and the weapon is generally, if I bring up the customizer, is generally a hollow point. I tried putting frag and HE and they just don't do enough damage. It's good just to get a good fast hollow point, solid, do um, kinetic damage around that 80 points, it's good to, for taking out wood, let's put it that way. Um, now as a, um, I'm leaving the missiles turned on, but even without missiles, it can take on a duster. We'll have, we'll have a go with a duster with the missiles and the gun in the back. Where are you? Where have you gone to? Are you over there? There we go. So we will I'll come off of it now and we'll have a look at this going in. Given time to line up, um, the ammo's situation, the belt fed is much better, but um, if you run out of ammo, then you've got some issues. Oh, the auto cannon took it out there. Um, good. I had tested it with disabling the auto cannon and the missiles, and it still did quite a good little job um, of taking out the enemy. The other one is I thought, well, since we've found a good um, compromise, let's take this, kerbalize it. So I have come up with a new ship. So this is the Sopwif. It is a dedicated fighter. Um, it's a little thinner, the body's not quite as big, engine more powerful, but it's got four sets of the guns, no missiles, so it's just relying on guns for this uh, particular battle. It can take out most of the enemy in a, in a parcel two. Parcel two. It's a little faster with a more powerful engine. So there is taken out a Shrike in one pass, which is not too bad. So that's the new dedicated fighter for the group, which is I think is um, is, is is quite good, um, and is a uh, yeah suitable for our little our little uh, team and should help to solve some of the issues we're having with power. Um, the fairy the, the swordfish. The fairy bomber is still very much the same. There's not a lot I can do with that. I think I've got to do a new bomber. What I thought would be a interesting build for this particular session is instead of building an aircraft, which I might still do on a future one when I need a bomber. I think that we need a, a bigger dedicated bomber. But for the moment, I thought what would be handy for the group, these seaplanes, is to effectively build a... Um, seaplane tender. Now the idea of it is not an aircraft carrier that's um, a modern uh, variation of of, of uh, the tender. Uh, the original tender was for seaplanes and it wouldn't have a deck for taking the aircraft off. It All the ships would, um, all the planes would be just taken on and off the ship using hoists. So they started just before World War um, One, when the planes and we had lots of seaplanes and a lot of them were converted merchantmen or 
even some cases they took a cruiser and put a deck on it etc um, there was the first purpose built one was actually the Ark Royal an earlier Ark Royal not the modern more modern one uh, where it was actually I think originally it was laid down but from the beginning it was designed or, or at least laid down and purchased purely for the seaplane tender role um, it was used throughout World War One. it would have some steam um, cranes near the front that would winch the seaplanes back on board and it had a big hangar deck area but it didn't have an actual flight deck where you could take off from the ship. A couple of different reports on that so it's one says it, they did have a flight deck one said it didn't but the early version certainly did not and for um, pulling back in the um, aircraft it had a mat at the back where they had gone to the mat and it could drag them on. Uh, other silly little things is it was one of the last ships in the fleet to actually have sails. It had a sail at the back to help keep the nose into the wind which was an interesting concept but again that was yeah, a couple of contrary reports on that. Um, it was armed and arm lightly armoured um, so it could support but its main role was supporting the seaplanes. In the battle fleet it was used as a reconnaissance uh, craft so the seaplanes would be dropped off and reconnoitre ahead of the main fleet to try and spot the enemy and the enemy lines. The only problem with that is a the seaplanes could only really take off and land in fairly calm water and certainly for the English the Atlantic and the North Sea is hardly ever calm let's put it that way so it was not great also if the seaplane tender had to stop to pick up the planes it would um, get left behind by the fleet which was carrying on and these tenders were not as fast as a lot of the um, cruisers and battleships um, so in, it ended up having to go right at the front ahead of the lines which has then made it vulnerable so it, it didn't really work in the fleet process where it did work was um, near the beginning of World War One I'm not sure if you will, but basically uh, some of the first bombing missions were done from a seaplane tender where they took the seaplane tender and launched the seaplanes with bombs on in range of their target and then recovered them on the way back. So it was useful in more of that being able to move aircraft um, without the aircraft being have the range from a land base. Anyway we're going to carry on with the build and hopefully we'll come out with something which is reminiscent of the sea tenders. And I'm just sitting on the bridge of the new seaplane tender which I'm calling the, which is the Ark Royal as the first of the uh, um, group now it's been a very frustrating build and it's still less than ideal um, we'll go through the reasons some of its game mechanics some of its design some of its just it doesn't suit the game but we'll go through that and we'll go through first what we've got so uh, first of all we've got some large guns on the side they're not um, terrific but they are designed to defend itself against larger vessels um, that get within a, you know, about 1500 meters we've got some I'm trying some different AA guns uh, we've got some 24 mil uh, with a little auto loader and also a 60 mil with a lot of HE frag um, shots see how that does uh, same at the front couple of AA guns 24 mil um, some large cannons because that's the theme I'm going with at the moment we have got a sail on the back um, down below we've got uh, let's go through the the AI and lots of resources one of the things is this is a fairly resource heavy ship 
um, little steam engine nothing too powerful just a, a a general little steam engine enough to power it and to keep it going lots of fuel and ammo on this ship there is um, one of its uses is as a tender and supplying the ships and that's one of the good game mechanics I was working on um, these little arms here ho holding uh, these ships in place these aircraft sorry uh, when an enemy comes in they'll release the ship and then they will tuck in there they're representing the the steam cranes that would have been on the ships to pull planes on board uh, and that's just the way I, I've laid them out here I could have uh, thinking about it I could have done them so they're opposite but uh, I decided to do them in a, um, an offset location here we've got a little door to the repair area where we've got some fuel and an engine under repair some ammo ready to put on the planes and spare parts lots of spare parts in here uh, this door closes when the enemy uh, comes in range so the door will close we've used a lot of docking uh, points on this ship to try and array out uh, the aircraft unfortunately you know, it's, it's still awkward I wish the docking was a little bit better um, the size it, it's not ideal the docking system in here for too many aircraft it's okay if you're doing one or two but for this number of aircraft it's most probably not ideal um, what else we got so the basic ship itself it's, it's okay it's not hyper powerful the idea wasn't to be powerful but to be a tender so a support ship size of the ship 28,000 now this is one problem at the start that's 28,000 of blocks, but that a lot of that is resource, like fuel. Uh, the fuel in here is over 10,000 of those resources. Because when you put a fuel tank in, it builds it full of fuel. So you're not paying just for the size of the container, but all the fuel inside. And it's basically bloody expensive um, the first time you build it after that you have to refill it from your refinery it would be nice if there was an option to um, build a fuel tank empty so it's less resources so that's number one so it's a little resource heavy number two is the docking system um, trying to get them to release so they don't all crash into each other is a problem and it's unreliable anything happens to a, a craft when you end you find that they've lost association with the docking uh, uh, basically uh, block I'm trying to think of the right word here now it's it's a um, uh, well tractor beam uh, docking station that's the word it loses association with a docking station I've got to go through and attach half of them again it's sometimes it would be awkward in between uh, between uh, battles having to do that every single time so that's a another problem good bits um, having a supply station if we use the I'm gonna go to the map here the resource uh, system here what we can do is um, have the aircraft have less ammo and resources etc on board so that uh, when they come into the resource zone they resupply and then go out and attack again um, i've been working on a couple of systems on that now n number one is this has got a range of about that's about 800 to a thousand meters and then the ship the aircraft will f have a variance of about three to five hundred meters so as long as you're on average around about a thousand to twelve hundred meters away from the target the ships will when they get close enough resupply rearm re -arm, and continue on their way so that was a a good way of using the ability of the supply ship and that's the way i've set up the ai so the ai on this is set up to effectively stay around the th the 900 to 1200 sort of area um, and resupply ships and repair them um, if they come in the other side I've changed on the aircraft if the aircraft take damage they come back to the ship so that they can repair and then they once they have repaired they go back out and fight again 
So that was also another positive thing you can do with a carrier. So overall, not too bad. We'll, we'll give it a little battle, but then I'll tell you how I will possibly use it in reality. Now, um, one good thing is you could change your aircraft depending on what you're fighting. So just before a fight, you could uh, change some of the aircraft over, you know, do a retrofit quickly on them. So more bombers, more fighters, etc. against different ships. It's not going to take on the absolute largest elite ships in the game. Uh, and the enemy's Tortuga has still been somewhat of a problem. But it's okay against the majority of ships and it's going to depend on the aircraft rather than the ship itself. But let's have a little battle. So we've got a bit of a stutter at the moment in the game but I've just brought in a little prowler which is quite a way away but um, one thing with the aircraft you don't want to have close in battle. You want to start, give the planes time to go up in altitude, get to their flight um, proper flight height, sort themselves out because sometimes they just like to crash and do God knows what when they're taking off. As I say, it took a while to sort out a control blocks that released them in the right time so they didn't all crash into each other and they still managed to crash into each other, but it's better than nothing. So they've got a range of aircraft going out there from torpedo bombers, dive bombers and the, uh, and the fighters into a prowler. Um, so they launch their torpedoes and the ship itself will generally stay out of range until the ship gets to within about 2,000 meters. It's just holding station at the moment. It's uh, potentially it's still on its fleet mood at the moment because I've set that to be at about you know don't only go to combat when it's within about 2,000 meters. Until then, it stays at whatever the engagement range was. feeling that that's a safe sort of distance so then the the aircraft can just deal with the enemy um, now yes the aircraft will get shot down and blown up etc etc they are intended as disposable aircraft so okay I won't go through um, all this battle but my intention is to, to use this in a couple of ways or a couple of possible ways one is rather than docking everything is just use it as a supply ship so the ships will be in the fleet but not docked with it and I can reduce the cost of the docking points and just have them so that they are um, arranged around so that they and I haven't got to worry about um, releasing them at certain times. The other one is to use them as drone ships so instead of separate ships that are then um, droned, uh, uh, docked, um, they're drone ships. Again they just release. The third option is it builds the ships as um, as it needs them using the vehicle spawner and uh, just want to check some of these yeah some of these have uh, none of them gone on yeah some of them have some of them haven't uh, so if there's aircraft it will it will spawn in um, fighters if there's sea craft it will spawn in torpedo bombers that's the other potential way but that is rather resource heavy but does mean that the system would pull in uh, craft based upon what the target was. I quite like the idea of it but I might do that as a, a later version. I think at this moment I'll mostly use it just as a support with a few spawned in craft and, and not worrying about the docking quite so much. Um, but anyway, this is, it's been fun looking at the mechanics of docking stations and how to, and the aircraft and getting a ship to stay away from the target although it is still trying to go for for my ship but you can see it's staying quite a far distance away which um, 
is debatable should I have it try and close in um, to help the uh, aircraft destroy it. It has got torpedoes and a few cannons so there's a debate uh, maybe I should have it try and close in slowly uh, to try and help finish off the target after the um, aircraft have done their first uh, passes. Anyway let's see how this performs if I get a chance to load it in, in game um, in the campaign. So until next time keep building, keep blowing stuff up and have fun.